All right, let's take a look at number two here. Uh, this was a tough one for uh, most of you, uh, rightfully so. Graphing problems often are an issue. We have to work on it for sure. Graphs don't go away. You have to be comfortable understanding that the graph doesn't always look like what its motion looks like. And that, that ends up throwing a few of you off. Let's take a look at what we got here. We've got an elevator, um, someone standing in an elevator. We've got their acceleration time graph listed up above here. And we have the information that the elevator is at position zero with zero velocity at the beginning of time. And so if we look at this graph up here, we see at the first five seconds, we have zero acceleration. For the next five seconds, we actually have positive four meter per second squared acceleration. The third segment, back at zero acceleration. And that last segment, we're at negative four meters per second squared. So we want to determine the velocity at the end of each five second interval. We need to be at the end of each five second interval. Not the average velocity and not the change in velocity, but the final velocity at the end of each five second interval. We want to indicate our results in the data table and we're going to graph that information. So let's take a look at what I have included here. I've got my answers up top here. I have zero uh, is the velocity at the end of the first five seconds. They're going 20 meters per second at the end of the next five. Uh, 20 meters per second. I did not need to include that meter per second there, by the way. It's already implied based on the table. And then finally, the last uh, segment, it finishes at zero. It was really important for you to show work here. Uh, each of these ended up being worth one point. Now, if you had gotten part of it wrong earlier, and your preceding answer, therefore, would also be wrong, if you had shown work and I had seen the mistake, I could have gotten another point. But if there was no work, all I could look at were the answers that you gave. And if it wasn't matching mine, you didn't get the point. The space was here for a reason. So I have the zero to five second mark indicated here. I know there's an initial zero velocity. I know the acceleration zero during that first segment because I'm looking at that part of the, that graph and there's zero acceleration here. I know it's five seconds long. I want to find my final velocity. Well, my final velocity has got to be zero. It starts at zero. There's no acceleration. It's got to finish at zero. There was no need for any equation here. And really, this step, you didn't need to show. It's a no-brainer. Zero. Now, the second five seconds, once again, I know initially, at least in that segment, it's zero. I know that there's an acceleration of four meters per second squared. I know there's a time of five seconds. And I'm looking for the final velocity. I'm using this equation, which is a change in velocity equation, showing that at the end of the, sec the second segment, I've got 20 meters per second. That's going to come into play during the second segment as my initial velocity. So now at the start of the 10th second, I'm traveling 20 meters per second. I know that there's got to be zero acceleration because I'm looking at the graph and there's a zero acceleration here. I know the time has to be five seconds. Because there's no acceleration, there's no change in motion, the final velocity has to stay 20. Lastly, same idea. I know my initial velocity going into the 15th second is 20 meters per second. I'm looking, I see there's a negative four meter per second squared acceleration, which means it's slowing down because if I'm going forward, positive 20, and I'm experiencing negative acceleration, this object's gonna slow down. Uh, it turns out that it, it got, does, it slows down to zero. I'll come down to the graph in a second. I wanna point out a few issues that I saw during a lot of your student, your, your work. A lot of you um, saw in some parts you needed to use the V equals delta D over T equation. But you kind of forgot that this was average velocity. I saw a good chunk of you call it delta V. It's not delta V. No, 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 it is not. So if you call it delta V, you were finding the change in velocity, which for some of them ended up being the same final velocity. For example, in the beginning, 
if you had called it delta v, you would have found that there was a change in velocity of 20, which was true at that, between that five, zero to five second and five to 10 second segment, it did experience a change of 20. And that, so that change happened to also be the final. But then during the next segment, you did the same thing. You tried to find the change in velocity. You correctly determined that the change in velocity was zero, but then you incorrectly called this third segment zero. And that's not true. It experiences a change in velocity of zero. Therefore, its final velocity is still 20 meters per second. So a decent amount went zero and 20, but then you wrote zero here, which threw you off. You didn't get that point. Then once again, in that fourth segment, you thought you were solving for delta V, and you found out that you got a delta V. In your work, you'll probably even, some of you even wrote it down, so I'm, I knew this. You got a delta V of negative 20 meters per second, which in fact is true. It did experience a change of 20 meters per second. However, at the end of that segment, at the last, at the 20th second mark, its final velocity was actually zero because again, just prior, it had a 20 meter per second velocity. And so, if you subtract negative 20 from the 20, you get zero. So, not only, but then some of you caught that. So check it out, some of you, that had written zero here and got a delta v of negative 20 oops, did in, did correctly subtract 20 from that and then wrote an answer of negative 20. However, what I think really ended up happening was you got a change in velocity of negative 20 and then you just wrote negative 20 down thinking that you were supposed to respond as the delta v. And again, it just happened to be based on your work your final velocity. So, coincidentally, if you did that, you would have actually gotten three of these four points. You wouldn't have gotten that third point because the final velocity is indeed not zero. However, if you did write zero down in that last segment, if you wrote negative 20, you would get that point because based on your work, the final velocity is indeed negative 20. That explains that part. Now let's take a look at the graph below. Now, there's two ways of doing the graph. You could either look at your work and graph based on what you know, or you can even just look at the acceleration time graph. And I want to do that first, and then I'll compare after. I know if I look at the acceleration time graph during the first five seconds, I have zero acceleration. I also know from the information in the paragraph that at the beginning of time, my velocity is zero. So I know I have to have uh, well, let's think about this. What is the slope of a velocity time graph? The slope is the change in y over the change in x. In this case, it's the change in v over the change in time, uh, which is acceleration. So I know that I have to be able to have a slope that begins at zero and for five seconds has no value. And therefore, without even having to do any actual math, I know I have to have a horizontal line there. Now let's use that same thinking for the second segment. I know from the second segment, I have to have a slope of a value of four. So if I look, I see that during the first five seconds, I have to have constant slope, a straight line, I have to have that slope end up being a value of 4. So if my run is 5, I mean, I, I can do some basic algebra here. If what I know the slope is 4, it has to equal a rise over a run. And I know the run is 5. I'm looking at the x here. And my rise, which I'll call y, is what I'm looking for. I'm going to cross multiply here. I see that my y value has to be 20. So I have to start at 0, and I have to finish at 20, and I have a straight line. Some of you wrote a curve in here. I mean, there, there is no curve. A curve would imply that the acceleration is changing, and it's not. 
remember the slope represents acceleration here and we have to have a constant slope, constant A. Now at that spot, I look at my graph once again to see what my acceleration is during the next five seconds. I see I have zero acceleration. So I have to, again, I have to have zero slope. And so for this segment, I am going to stay the same speed. Lastly, I see here that the last segment has to have the same slope as I had during the second segment, but it has to be negative because it's in the negative region of the acceleration time graph. So I'm basically going to do the same thing I did during 5 to 10 seconds, but make it negative. Starts at 20, finishes at 0. Uh, this was worth 4 points, 1 each. Now here's the tricky part with this problem. You didn't really need to look up here or refer to any of your work to be able to do this correctly. So I should treat this part of the problem independent from the first part. However, I didn't choose to do that because some of you oops, graphed your work based on your work up here. And so what do I do here? Do I grade your work up here and base your graph on it? Knowing well though that that graph that you are drawing doesn't match the given information. This was an AP exam. I don't think you would have gotten credit for any of anything really other than this. But I'm being a little merciful to be in the beginning first test of the year. And I'm actually decided to look at your work if you showed it and or your responses up here. And if your graph matched your responses, then you would have been able to earn points. That's just for this test. Keep that in mind. So the most common one I saw, I'm going to show real quick. The most common one I saw, you had 0 here, 20 here, 0 here, and negative 20. The majority of the wrong responses uh, gave that. As explained earlier. So what, you know, it was, again, pretty tough, though, still to award partial credit here. I'll try to explain why, but you might not get it. It's okay. I'm the grader, not you. You don't really need to know this part. I'm just trying to explain it. What your information shows then is at the end of the first five seconds, it needs to be zero. At the end of the next five seconds, it needs to be 20. Good. Then at the end of your next segment, it needs to be zero. Um, so I would have had to look for, at the very least, a straight line here. And then at the end of the next segment, it needs to be negative 20. So do I award for do I award full credit for this? Again, it's pretty tough to say yes. Each of them were worth four points. One, one, or each of them worth one point. Do you get all four for that? I mean, based on your work, yes, it matches that. But again, it's directly going against the problem. So let me show you. I gave you this point, I gave this point no matter what. And then I really had to juggle. Do I give you this point? Because this segment clearly shows negative acceleration. Where in the graph, it clearly shows it's not negative. It's zero. I gave it to you. I shouldn't have, but I did. Because then, even then, some actually did correctly graph this, even though your work was different. So, as merciful here, and if you want me to try to explain this to you again, I'll, I'll try to explain it to you in person, since it's really hard to explain over the video here. Alright, let's go to um, part B. Get rid of all this garbage. Part B. Uh, here we're just basically looking at the position time graph. Uh, once again, we have to indicate our results on the table here and we have to graph it. The graph ended up being pretty challenging. The top part was worth four again, one point for each segment, correct? And then down here was worth three points on time of the graph after. Um, the first five seconds was pretty straightforward still. They weren't moving, they weren't accelerating. 
they stayed zero, at zero. Now, one thing I want to point out before I get too far ahead of myself, my key is, up here is actually not correct. I'm going to keep, I, correct, grade, I graded it as if this was correct. I'm going to explain why it's wrong in a second. Um, I went back through and I wanted to make sure I didn't give anyone, take points away, um, and I didn't. So it ended up being moved. But really, the, the right answer, um, he, this is wrong. And this, the third and fourth one are actually technically uh, wrong. I'm going to explain why they were wrong in a minute, and I'm going to tell you what the real right answer was uh, before I get. And there, though, I have to try to explain where the numbers come from in the first place. So, uh, again, not moving the first segment was easy. Second segment, uh, my initial velocity is zero. I know it was zero, it wasn't moving. My acceleration was four uh, times five, etc. I plugged it in, you got 50 meters, a decent amount of you were able to get there. It's the third segment where I saw it fall apart, and here's where showing work is crucial. Now, if on the prior page, prior part, you had gotten a different answer. Again, remember earlier, uh, we found that the velocity was supposed to be 20 here. Now, fourth, and we get rid of it. Third segment, the right answer, V was 20. The fourth segment, V was zero. But remember, a decent amount of you said this was actually zero. This was actually negative 20. If you had shown your work here, and you had indicated that your initial velocity in the third segment was actually zero, even though that's not right, if you had indicated that, I would have awarded you full credit if I just, if you showed your work all the way out. Now, if you don't show your work, didn't show your work all the way out, which unfortunately a lot of you didn't do, I couldn't give you that point. I couldn't just assume that that's the that's how you did it. I couldn't assume that's where the number came from. So, if you had anything other than zero here, or anything other than a hundred here, I mean, for the third segment, the only thing I could do. Uh, would be able to look at your work, and if you didn't have work, you, you didn't get a point. And it's that straightforward. And the same thing with the fourth segment. You know, if you showed your work and where your numbers came from, well, you likely got full credit here. Anyhow, why my key is wrong. Um, if you look at it, this is true. This object during the third segment does have a displacement of 100 meters. But what we were supposed to include um, was the displacement x of the elevator above the starting point at the end of each five second interval. This is how the 100 meters I have here is how far it travels during that segment. However, it was already 50 meters above the ground, so I actually am supposed to have written down 150. And then, same thing over here in the fourth segment, it actually traveled 50 additional meters. It was slowing down during that segment. So I should have written 50 more than what I had in the prior segment. So 50 plus 150 is 200 meters. The real answer is, should be 0, 50, 150, and 200. So if you wrote that down, you got full credit. If you wrote down the original 0, 50, 150, which is what my key originally had, I give you full credit because you made the same mistake I originally made. And um, if you had anything other than those two answers, you had to show work to get full credit. Now let's take a look at this graph. Uh, this graph is uh, it was definitely tricky, and only one of you got it right completely. Uh, and I added notes here that you should not add. This is not what I expected you to have. This was just my notes for you right now. So I'm going to include that down here. Um, so please don't actually include this stuff on your answer. So what do I have here? I know during the first segment, object does not go anywhere, stays rest. During the next segment, I know it travels to the 50 meter mark. Now, why is there a curve here? Well, remember, this is a displacement time graph, and so the slope is the change in y, which in this case is displacement. Over the change in x, which in this case is time, and displacement over time, change in displacement over time is velocity. Um, and since I know that the velocity is represented, the slope represents the velocity, I gotta think, well, what is true about the velocity during this five seconds? We know the velocity is actually changing 
because it's accelerating. So I'm looking for a changing slope of this curve. The second segment has to finish at the 150 mark, or I had to displace an additional 100 meters. And I know it had to be a straight positive slope because we do have positive velocity with no acceleration. Lastly, it's still moving forward, finishes at the 200 meter mark, but it was slowing down. So two things I need to think about, or I could think about to know that it needed to be a curve, negative curve like this. One, I know it's curving because it's got acceleration. Two, I know it needs to be a negative curve because it's got negative acceleration. Um, but in addition to that, I know that the slope in the beginning needs to be pretty high. At the end, it needs to be zero. Because I know the car is coming to a rest at that spot. Or the elevator, I'm sorry, not car. All right, this was worth three points. Basically, if you um, did the whole thing correct, you get all three points. If you did a couple things wrong, you could have still gotten a point or two. It really depends on the segments. Um, if you had straight lines everywhere, you wouldn't have gotten all three points, but you probably still would have gotten two as long as they finished in the right spots, things like that. Okay, excellent.